Hello everybody. I love the smell of thermal paper in the middle of the night. Smells like champignons. So this is me, Nino, and I am thanking you for joining me on a nightly adventure where we shall once again combine old and new technology. I am sure you have asked yourself, with all those marvelous advances in computational power of our entertainment devices and how they are faster than this and that supercomputer of the past, like an iPhone 4 being as fast as a Cray 2. What's the point of all of this? Like, you're having the computational power, but you are just, I don't know, chasing birds, slashing fruit and whatever else you're doing there. So how about using such a device as a computer, sort of as it was meant to be, on a hard copy terminal where, you know, you don't even have a screen. Well, that's what we're going to do here. Essentially, I'm having here this Brother EP44 typewriter slash terminal. I'm having an Android cell phone and I am having an ESP32 uh, board. It's a Wemos Lolin 32 Lite or something like that. Anyway, uh, this is a nice little microcontroller which will serve as a bridge between this and that by logging into the hotspot of the cell phone and connecting there to a server which is offering a shell on a Linux environment. And this is going to allow us to send commands to the Linux environment by way of the terminal, a 300 baud in a very classical way and receive the replies from there. Let's see how this actually looks in practice. Well, the Linux environment is Termux. Let's start Termux. Termux. So Termux has been started and is really just a nice way of having Linux on an Android phone without the necessity of rooting it it's absolutely awesome, I love it. Here you can just basically see my files, like this works like you are used to. Now let us start the Telnet server. We are having here a hotspot, you can see the hotspot symbol. The Telnet server is going to provide a shell over the network, which is having no security. Uh, that's normally a concern, but here it is actually desired because the microcontroller thingy is much easier to set up if you don't have to deal with encryption. So we are starting a busybox telnet server on port 8023 and off we go. Well that's awesome. Now we have to yeah power up the microcontroller I think. Uh, that is going to happen by the phone's battery, you know, this, this isn't doing anything else. Just give me a second to connect this. Okay. So the microcontroller has been connected. And essentially it is now serving as a bridge between between the network and the serial port over which we are printing everything to the terminal. Like basically these wires you see sticking out of there, they're making contact with the serial port. And Thermux is already greeting us. You see it connected to the Wi-Fi network uh, and then it connected the system and then in we are. This was a little bit non-trivial, by the way, because Android is not letting you choose your IP address for your hotspot, which I find, well, pretty, pretty stupid, you know, because actually I have to code the board um, on which IP address it is supposed to access the server. And I don't know which server, um, which exact IP address the server is going to have. So I went for a little trick 
obviously the gateway through which all traffic is going to pass in the hotspot is going to be the phone. So I simply told it to uh, assume that the server is there where the gateway is. And that worked. Uh, besides, this terminal has only a very limited capacity of accepting characters. So when you are doing this, basically you're, you're fetching a character from here and you're transporting it from here and you're fetching a character from here and transporting it to there. Well, that way, needs a delay. You, you need to say a little bit of a delay so that you do not overflow the buffer of the terminal, in which case it will start to, you know, print garbage, drop characters, do all the pleasantries one can imagine. But you see here, essentially the welcome message we already saw on the phone. Does this thing work as we are used to? Let's try. Let's say list the files. Yeah, there we are having a little issue, which we're going to handle in just in a moment. You see, this is a dump terminal. A dump terminal is one which does not allow you to control the screen. Why? Because there is no screen. And therefore, anything you do here is going to be full of those fancy characters, like this thing you see here. These are escape sequences in order to color the output, but you know, uh, <laughs> there's no color and there is no screen to color. So well, once this is done, which I think will be pretty soon, we're going to set our terminal to be done. Yep, and that we're going to be uh, to say here export uh, the variable term equal to dumb yeah thanks for getting it my dear now let's see I should have one list file there uh, ls r dot list What's it called in directory? How strange it is. How strange, how strange. Where am I? <laughs> I should be under my normal working directory. Data, data, contermux, file, user, etc. Haha, <laughs> very funny. Okay, I'm in the wrong directory. That's not a big deal though. We're going to simply say, uh, well, I need to go one level up. Mm -hmm. And I think I need to get one more level up. Where? What does it look like here? Yep. We're going to change now to home. CD home. everything now nicely you realize there are no more escape sequences so this export term equal to dump did its job now I just want to see I should be ah yes now we are at home well excellent you see this is all working but as would suit our supercomputer, we of course should run a few programming languages and you know, things like that. My favorite programming language is Lisp, that is without question. And frankly, I like most varieties of it, particularly Scheme and Common Lisp. So let's wait for it to finish the directory listing. That's not something you do every day in a modern system, is it? Now the funny part is, as this has connected to a Telnet server, you know, with the ESP32, uh, I could have connected a lot more terminals. 
okay, you will say there will be no security because Termux is actually still running with just one user everywhere and there's nothing you can do about that. But I can reply to this, the incompatible time sharing system on which a lot of artificial intelligence stuff was done in the past was having practically no security either. So that's not going to be really an argument against it. So far, a little mini computer here, a little supercomputer <laughs> compared to 1970s um, measures is working just fine. Now, now that we did this, let's start Lisp. I'm using embedded common Lisp, ECL. It's an awesome system, which you'll find for most platforms. And here you see it already starting up. Everything a little bit late, so that the terminals uh, can handle it. I discovered a little problem with Lisp here. Essentially, uh, we don't have a really functioning backspace key because it is transmitting everything character by character and not line by line. I chose character mode and not line mode. Uh, it is transmitting the backspace character instead of just transmitting the text less um, one, uh, one letter, you know. And a lot of software doesn't really like it when you are when you are um, sending them back backspace characters. Like they don't know what to do with this. You know, it's not correcting anything, it just doesn't work. Uh, oh yeah, you see here Taichi Yuasa and Masami Hagia. These guys have made one of my absolutely favorite Lisp books. So I really love using ECL. Uh, and now you'll see, uh, for instance, what happens? Let, let's try something simple. We will simply say zero and it should spit back zero right at us. It did. Now, let's demonstrate the backspace problem. I'm going to write zero, but I am going to this time erase it. Haha, you see the uh, control H character. I'm going to write a nine, but it's not going to accept it. It's going to choke on it. It's going to declare that it has an error. Yeah, that's not... Yeah, 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 yeah. Very explicative. Uh, available restarts, restart top level. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to say, like, well, sorry, man. Uh, we shouldn't have pressed that. But obviously, we can't live without backspace here. So I devised a little trick. Uh, I wrote there a little list program, which is going to read character by character of whatever you are typing. And it is uh, going to, like in a sort of buffer, and it is going to evaluate that buffer periodically. And uh, let's, just, let's just go back to the top level. We're going to load that program and I'm actually curious whether it will work here. I haven't tested it yet. So, did I, did I go back? What, what's the matter here? Hmm? Say zero, how it happens. Eh, it does happen, it works just fine. Okay, great. I'm going to say load. Uh, where exactly are your yes? Uh, dot list. Here we go. I sacrifice two characters, nothing big. Uh, essentially, if you type a dollar sign, it's going to evaluate whatever you did. And if you type the, exc the exclamation mark, it's going to terminate um, interaction. So I think we got it. That's, that's all sort of nice. And we're going to start our little editor by saying our nil. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> uh, I could have made a nice prompt or something, but, you know, didn't bother. I'm going to say A, B, C, D. And then, in order to have the whole thing evaluated, we're going to write dollar, and God knows where dollar is on this terminal. Ha ha. 
Okay. <laughs> I should have picked some other character, seriously. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's try... Let's try anything. Uh, wait, 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 we're having pound, uh, paragraph, good gracious. I should have taken the American version of this thing here. Okay, I have no idea. Uh, listen to it, some form of, okay, there's the sedilia, there is the whatever else. Seriously, no dollar sign, but a pound sign, awesome. Uh, what happens if I do... No, this is, this is not it. Okay, great. Okay, great. I got the great dollar sign, which is essentially this thing. No, not a big U. Now I'm removing this, but the dollar sign should be second shift here. Yes. I'm going to say enter, we just corrected what we wrote and it did evaluate it correctly without complaining. I actually can write functions here. Oh well, why not? Let's try that. Let's say plus one of x, right? Defun pl of x and all it's going to do, it's, it is going to add one to x. One x and again we need uh, second shift and q here the dollar sign and it did accept our function pl you can see it here too okay great now that we did this let's let's evaluate something with it let's say pl pl of eight should give us nine right so this and again our Awesome dollar sign. And it printed nine. Here you're having it more clearly on the paper. And essentially, well, it's working. And we're going to leave it now though. So let's first adjust here a little bit the paper to the left. Excellent. So back it goes. So let's leave by pressing the exclamation mark. Yeah. So we should be, are we there where we should be now? Uh, okay, funny, we're still in Lisp. Uh, very funny ES, of course, because I left the editor, but I didn't leave the Lisp system. <laughs> yes. Okay, fine. I find it pretty nifty that this thing has this little display so one can see what happens even without looking um, just at the paper. Paper. And we're going to leave it by uh, one. Nice, we're now at the top level and now we should say quit and common lisp and we are back where we were okay I think I I think I had a Fortran program somewhere here let's see show me anything with F anything hmm. not sure how I called it you know ah there we go hello F95 well, let's do that. Let's say G Fortran output. Uh, oh, hi and hello. Dot F ninety five. Okay, cool. So now it should be able to say hi to us which we will now try to do. Hi. Hello world. Yes, finally, somebody has run a Fortran program on a dump terminal from a Unix environment on his cell phone.
Oh, well, pretty much. I could also show you the basic interpreter and things like that. Uh, I never understood why, why um, you know, Linux never got a nice basic interpreter uh, until, you know, these um, Microsoft imitated things came out, which are pretty nice, like GW Basic, Free Basic, QB64, and so on. I have here a very little one, which is very nice, but yeah, maybe I'll leave that for some other time. Anyway, that's pretty much it. You see, like the phone's screen is off already. It went to, to sleep, but here everything's working just fine. You know? And we are able to, you know, do stuff here. Uh, the one thing which would bother you if you were ever going to use a dump terminal is that VI is not supposed to work, you, you know, because it's a visual editor. And same goes for Nano and Pico and Emacs and whatever. They're all visual editors. They suppose that you actually have a screen, which we don't. So what you could use here is Ed. And I have no idea how to use Ed, to be quite frank. But I am a little bit willing to learn right now, um, given that this thing is actually working. What actually happens if we run a V? Let's see, I haven't done this so far. I just know that it doesn't work. Let's see what will actually happen. Okay, so I'm saying VI, and then what? Hey, yeah, 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 a bit of escape characters. And what will you do then? Yeah, the end of the screen. And then what? Oh God, I realize what it's going to do. Look, it's going to give us a printed screen full of escape sequences. Basically those little tilde characters that you're used to seeing. Yeah, you see the little tilde character here? And yeah, we'll have to somehow get out of this mess. But you see this is not what VI normally is supposed to look like. So you can pretty much forget about that editor. And I thank you for watching. I hope you drew some inspiration. And See you next time, yeah? Bye-bye! <laughs>